morning, everybody. This is day three of Europe Remembers on Tour, and we're in Aramans right now. Uh, it's very crowded over here. There are a lot of people walking around, and we found a guide. It's Dudley. Uh, Dudley, welcome, and it's great to be here. As a tour guide, uh, first question, how is it with all those people who are wandering around and they want to know everything? How is the day for you? It's always very difficult when you come on an anniversary uh, occasion. <laughs> the traffic is bad, uh, but there's lots to see. I don't think I've ever seen as many uh, military vehicles as I've seen uh, of this celebration. Where are we now? Aramanche is famous. Not only was it liberated on the 6th of June 1944, but also it was the site where we put the Mulberry Harbours. So uh, Churchill had recognized that we were going to be unable to capture a port intact and that we we're going to have to land all of our resources across the open beaches. Well, that's not really feasible. So he came up with a, a brilliant idea, which is to manufacture your own harbour, sail it across the sea, build it offshore, and voila. It was an incredible construction. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, we created two, and the Americans had one on Omaha Beach. But unfortunately, uh, and I always say this to my American guests, and I've got Americans with me this week, that the Americans didn't listen to the instructions about how to assemble the, the <laughs> harbour. So the very last thing you did with the harbour is you tightened down all the screws and bolts and all the rest of it. So when the big storm came in, uh, two weeks after D-Day, it battered this, the, uh, the harbour that we see in front of us here, but uh, it survived, whereas at Omaha, it totally destroyed it. A day like this, what are you going to do? Uh, my, my guests have gone into the, this museum in uh, uh, um, Aramanche because it's a very good museum, but then I'm going to take them down to the Gold Beach. Uh, and they're going to look at the landings and then I'm going to take them up to Montgomery's headquarters which is inland and then we're hoping if this weather holds that uh, we're going to see the Dakotas flying over the 75th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We are going there also. Yeah. Well thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice yeah. to meet you and, we, you. and we take a look. Yes. Okay. Great. Bye-bye. We're here with Alan King. What are you doing? I can't believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm signing my photographs on behalf of the Royal British Legion, and for the welfare of the, uh, well, the old troops, actually. If you would like to say anything to the young people now, young people going to school and think about what happened then, what would you like to say to them? Well, it's very, very difficult because what we went through, you've got to live. You can't, you can't describe it, and you, you can't make a film about it. You've got to live it. Well, we're now on Juno Beach, one of the beaches, of, of course, here in Normandy. What is so specific about Juno Beach, Joel? Um, the Canadians landed here on the 6th of June, 1944, and uh, it was also one of the, the beaches along the coast of Normandy. And uh, the Canadians had a really hard battle after the, they landed here on the, on the 6th of June. And yeah, they liberated the most part of the northern part of, uh, of Groningen. There's a lot going on. It's all kinds of television and important people over here. It's all because of the 6th of June. Yes, um, because we have here uh, the ceremony on the 6th, especially for the Canadians. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's really impressive beach if you know that the Canadians uh, move, away, move from here all the way up to the northern part of the Netherlands. We're here at Juno Beach because tomorrow all the ceremonies will take place here and a lot of Canadian people are here with us now. Vanessa, you're one of the Canadians and you brought a lot of people with you from Canada. Yes, we did. Um, I'm from EF Educational Tours and we provide educational travel for young people with their teachers or cadet leaders um, and a lot of them are here today. Uh, they've been here for a couple of days and the most important is them participating in the ceremony here. And how many uh, young people did you bring? Well, between Canada and the US we have a few thousand so um, you know we're here to uh, make sure that they get a chance to attend their uh, respective ceremonies. Okay, and 
especially, uh, especially this place, Juno Beach, is very important for the Canadian people. Yes, that's right. I mean, um, you know, uh, obviously we know what happened here 75 years ago. Uh, and what's amazing is that um, Veterans Affairs Canada has been working really closely with us to produce an important procession at the start of the ceremony. So uh, there will be 359 of our youth um, along with some local French students uh, that will represent the amount of Canadians who died uh, here on Juno Beach 75 years ago. Um, and so we're really proud to have our students represented in that. And now we're here at Wiesterham, a spe very special place, and we talk with the mayor. I want to ask you, uh, we are on Europe Remembers on tour, to try to keep the memory alive, but how important is that? Those things is probably the most important thing nowadays for different reasons. The first thing is um, we know that the new generation is not that really taking care of what the past uh, was so important here on the D-Day landing beaches. We are exactly there where on the 6th of June 1944 more than 150,000 men decided to land in order to deliver Europe for peace, for freedom and all, all those values that we think are important in democracy. And all the meaning of European Union is based on those values. So the idea of the commemoration of 6th of June, depending on each year, which are not the same, obviously, uh, with veterans, with families, with uh, different members of governments, are important. But the most important is make sure that we are working on duty of memory. And the duty of memory is the idea to make the link between veterans and history with the new generation and this is probably the most important thing that we have to work on. I think we have to remember the sacrifices, the commitment of the men who came ashore uh, on that day and those who came afterwards and those who served. Some paid the ultimate price, some are our veterans and some are still with us today. We have to remember their service but we have to also resolve that we're not going to let the rise of nationalism and petty inter country disputes and personal animosities fuel another conflict. We know what tragedy can come of that. We've seen the march to war in this continent before. And together, Europeans and Americans have to build a better future. The promise of Europe was so bright 25 years ago when I was a NATO Supreme Allied Commander. And I look at it today and I look at the disintegration of the determination it was a promise half fulfilled. Europeans today, with the help of your friends across the Atlantic, we've got to finish the job and bring Europe together. We want a Europe whole and free from the Atlantic to the Urals that's a partner for the United States in making a better world for all mankind. Mm -hmm.